away with the fact that our homes provide us with protection and security and forget that fundamentally they're just bricks and mortar. Tonight on Help My House Is Falling Down, this bungalow in Lytham St Anne's was left to Carol by her dad and promised a new life for her. I just saw myself um, living the good life here. It's full of emotional importance for her son, Alex, too. The bungalow means a lot to me because it has a lot of nice family memories, but they're just good ones. But the actual building is on the brink of cracking up. It's a very big crack to get in a very short space of time. You should be expecting the worst. The bungalow's problems are pushing Carol to desperation. This is not something that can wait. <laughs> Lytham St Anne's near Blackpool is home to Carol Johnson, devoted mum to graphic designer son Alex, as well as rescue dog Jasper. <laughs> and her very special ladies, the hens. Born and bred in Lytham, self-employed Carol came back here four years ago to spend time with her elderly parents, moving into her father's second property, this 1950s one-bedroom bungalow. It's really nice to move into the bungalow. Just to be close to my parents was, was great, and um, I, I just saw myself um, living the good life here, sort of settling down and getting my hens and growing the fruit and veg and having a nice place um, to live. When her father sadly passed away last year, he left Carol his bungalow. She treasures it as a permanent reminder of Dad. The last half hour of Dad's life he spent in the back garden with me. I didn't realise at the time just how special that, that memory was going to be to me. I don't want to move from there, I want to keep it and, and stay there. And the house holds a special place in her son Alex's heart too. There's so much in there which reminds both of us of him. And for her, I think it's just like a big memento of everything she'll, she'll remember with him. And, and for me too. Carol is planning a loft conversion despite all the problems with the house. I'd like to make it such that if at any point Mum would like to come and live with me, that she could do. Oh, I like, I like yes. No, I like that. Who knows? Might become a grandmum some stage, and so, um, yeah, just like to make it into a safe place to live with and, and a nice place to live. Oh. I'd also like to think that I can pass it down, hopefully stay with the family through generations. But just a few months after her dad's death and before Carol can put her plans into action, the bungalow has started to behave very badly. It's a bit like a child that's... I don't know whether it's being naughty or it's not well. In the kitchen, worrying cracks have started to appear. And there's the invasion of some unwelcome visitors. I mean, slugs coming in your kitchen's not very nice. Where you've got slug trails kept going across your, your slippers and your shoes, and you know, it's a bit, it's not nice, is it? In the bathroom, the loo is causing more problems. In the summer, the toilet blocked up, so I would have to plunge that to, 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 to free it up, and um, I didn't know why. And in the dining room and lounge, it now feels like the house is quite literally moving beneath Carol's feet. The floor started to sort of feel like it was moving a bit, and I noticed the crockery started to rattle in the sideboard. I 
started wondering, you know, what, what's going to go wrong next? What is the matter? You know, why is the house starting to have a life of its own? Still worse, cracks are on the move throughout, growing bigger and spreading by the day. And then I moved to the cabinet, and then I saw this huge crack which had arrived. One crack now extends across two walls of the dining room. You can see a crack like that and you know that's not normal. The cracks aren't just inside, they go right through to the outside too. It, it was quite scary really. I really panicked and thought I don't know what's what, what to do. Seeing her father's legacy under threat is very emotional for Carol. Hopefully, together, we can face up to her problems. How much would it upset you both if this house was you know, really in serious trouble? A lot, a lot, because I've got lots of sentimental and happy memories, a lot of attachment to it, and my dad spent his last... 20 minutes in the back garden with me here. You know, I've spent time with him here and it means a lot to me. So it would, yeah, I'd be really upset. The tour of the bungalow's problems kicks off in Carol's kitchen. This piece here was clearly added at a later date. Mm. And this is moving about all over the place, isn't it? There's all these cracks look as though, if you look at the way mm. the lines are going, it's, it, it's, it certainly hasn't been built well. And do you find there's anything else wrong with it in here? Um, well, slugs come oh, yes, yeah, so I get slugs, particularly in the summer. Um, th those long green ones with the leopard skin backs. I suspect that if you've got slugs in here, you've, you've got moisture getting in. But if we go outside, it's probably more apparent. The signs of damp in the kitchen make the drains located right outside a prime suspect. What do you think might be wrong with the house? Well, I don't know if it's anything to do with that sort of drain thing there, because the toilet blocked up, and I thought, well, why has it started to block up all of a sudden? So it does make you think it's a bit strange. Carol's blocked loo is right by this drain and tells me it's worth investigating. But there are further warning signs everywhere I look. We'll look at the drains and we'll investigate them, but I think what's more significant and worrying out here is the fact that there's signs of movement all over the house. Right. Um, That's not good, is it? It's not great. Not In the dining room, the alarm bells ring particularly loudly. Quite a hearty crack there. That's mm. tricky, yeah. This just happened this year. But it's a very big crack to get mm. in a very short space of time. Yeah. You're really talking here Actually, it's moved not only apart, but it's also moved across as well. So it's moving in two directions. Mm -hmm. This floor also started to yeah. go up. The whole room's on sort of like a slant. If you, it goes down and then up again, you can sort of see in the wall. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, don't, I don't think this bit of the floor has gone up as much as that bit of the floor <laughs> has gone yeah. down. Yeah. I think um, there's a lot of stuff going on here that is not great. Until we have a really good look and get to the bottom of this, I think you should be expecting the worst. Carol's precious house is showing alarming signs of acute distress. Block drains, cracks inside and out, and a slug infestation in the kitchen. The family need to take a clear and hard look at the bungalow they call home. To help solve the mystery of the bungalow's problems and see if they can be fixed, We'll be bringing in the specialists. This is telling me that that wall has moved down a considerable amount. But is Carol ready to face the upset and the upheaval that this will bring? The only option is that we dig up your hall. are there to protect us physically but often they can protect us emotionally as well 
But when things go wrong with houses, if you are emotionally attached, it's even harder to sort it out. Lytham St Anne's in Lancashire is home to single mum Carol Johnson. After inheriting her father's bungalow, she had high hopes of living in a family heirloom that she would one day pass on to her son, Alex. I just saw myself um, living the good life here. But this property is struggling to stay upright. There are signs of movement on every floor in the house and it's riddled with cracks inside and out. Still grieving for the loss of her father, the problems are hitting Carol hard. Instead of being a nice place to live where you've got lovely memories, it's playing up, it's misbehaving, things are going wrong. It's sad enough like, that we you know, lost Dad not long ago and of this, and it, it really, I think she's long overdue just a bit of a break from worrying about things like this. It's so untimely, you think, can't you just have time to get over losing your dad? And But you've got to do it. I mean, now, this is not something that can wait. It's... Carol's hoping to build a loft conversion so that one day her mother can come and live with her. But all that's on hold until we can see if this seriously distressed house even has a future. Time for a thorough investigation. Firstly, we need to address why the bungalow is quite literally cracking up. The cracks could be evidence of subsidence when a building sinks into the ground underneath. Assuming that the bungalow was built by reputable builders in the 1950s, with these ground conditions, we would expect it to be built on a raft foundation. This type of foundation normally consists of a concrete slab which covers the entire area on which the house stands. A raft foundation is often used on soft or loose soils. It spreads the load, balancing out any differences in movement. But in certain cases, subsidence can still occur, even with a raft foundation. Carol's home is in an area which is generally no more than eight metres above sea level, and it's surrounded by soggy peat bogs. With these local conditions in mind, structural engineer Simon Pitchers gets the team doing a manual inspection of the soil under Carol's house. We're taking earth samples from two different places at the front of the bungalow to find out what lies beneath. We think that what we're going to find here is sand and then underneath that peat, and that probably will provide us with the answer to our questions as to why the building has moved. Well, we are now down four metres. Um, quite unexpected, really. Very, very hard material. It's almost like a rock and at quite a shallow depth. This discovery of solid ground is puzzling and unexpected. Simon calls in geotechnical engineer Chris Eaton, an expert in ground conditions. We've put down a hole just here. Okay. And I was expecting to find some really evil peat yep. underneath there. But actually what we're finding is the ground is just getting harder and harder as we go down. What we've got in this area is extremely variable ground. Even a few metres can vary tremendously. Peat can be a few millimetres thick to several metres thick. So Ian now is putting a hole down over there yeah. and he could find something completely different. He could indeed find something completely different. Outside, Ian's finished digging the second hole. So, Ian, what have you found? What do you reckon of that? That is a lot more like what we thought we might find. This, in fact, is the evil peat. It is. It's all organic. I mean, it's saturated. You see the water actually squeezing out of that. It's almost impossible to imagine a house resting on that, isn't it? It is. One part of Carol's house is sitting on squidgy peat, whilst the other is on solid ground. But a good concrete raft with the right supports should be able to handle this kind of difference in soil types under it and provide a stable foundation. 
So this corner of the house is clay, and that corner of the house is on peat, so that no wonder the house is shifting a bit. Presumably this was built with a reinforced slab, so it sort of floated on the, uh, the peat, so it was a floating foundation. Well, you would have hoped that, but in the 50s, they really they didn't build things as, as uh, structurally stiff as they would now, so I wouldn't expect this to be a terribly, you know, sort of resilient foundation that we've got. But the, the problem is, it looks as though whatever they've done hasn't actually worked. It's this mix of ground conditions that's making Carol's foundation sink and causing her home to crack apart. But there's a solution to this. Using steel and concrete columns called piles, the bungalow can receive the support it needs by driving those columns through the soft ground and anchoring them in the solid bedrock beneath. However, for a small property like this, the bedrock can be no more than 10 metres deep beneath the house for it to work and be cost effective. The first thing we've got to do is to find out whether, whether the ground conditions are actually going to be acceptable to put in anything. I mean, there is a chance we can't do anything. So now we need to get the big machines in and get down. We do, we've got to get deeper because we didn't get to the bottom of the peat. How deep do we need to go? One would hope we would catch uh, the bottom within 20 metres, I would have thought. Mm. But, I um, mean, 20 metres, that's a lot that's of double-decker buses piled up on top of each other. In fact, it's nearly five double-deckers. So we're going to need to bring in the machines. Heat. It's wet, it's soft, it's weak. As far as building a house on it is concerned, it is evil. And the existence of evil peat is very bad news for the bungalow, especially for Carol's plans to add the extra weight of a loft conversion. Soil type and correct foundations are crucial factors when considering building any home. The ideal soil type is bedrock with shallow topsoil. Unlike clay, it won't swell or shrink at different times of the year. The danger with sandy soil is that when it gets wet, it becomes heavy and sinks. Chalky soil is great for foundations as it has good drainage and can take considerable weight. Peat becomes swampy when wet and shrinks in hot weather, making it potentially unstable as a base for a building. Different soil types require different approaches, so before planning any alterations that could add weight to your home, consult a structural engineer for advice on the suitability of your foundations. In Carol's house, we're on the hunt for any further telltale signs of movement caused by insufficient foundations in the property. In the loft, there's a shocking discovery. What I'm looking at here is a timber member that's actually snapped. <laughs> and the reason for all this, it's actually sitting on the wall between the kitchen and the dining room. So this is telling me that that wall has moved down a considerable amount. So it's pretty serious. There's no doubt that Carol's house is sinking. Not only is there strong evidence of subsidence, but it's now highly likely that the concrete raft has failed too. Carol's dream of converting her loft for her mum to move in is starting to look impossible. If you look at this crack, remember the theory of cracktivity is if you draw a line along the crack and then you draw a line perpendicular 90 degrees to the crack, it will point to where the problem is. And the theory of cracktivity at the moment says we need to have a look there. If you look at the top of the door as well, it's actually sloping right down, so it sort of gives the game away a bit as well. It's certainly suggesting that it's this point here that there's, it's, it's dumped, hasn't it? Exactly basically. right. The finger of suspicion is swinging to this particular there. location. This location happens to be right in the middle of the house which means further investigation would be invasive, to say the least. Before we get on to that, we need to look at the other issue, the drains. Are these responsible for the slug infestation? 
The drains run under the kitchen extension and we need to find out if they're still intact. As the camera goes down the pipe, the camera's gone underwater. Where it goes underwater, there's a problem. The pipe's sumped or, or dropped, to put it in a simple terms, and that appears to be under this uh, extension. And then eventually, the extension could uh, drop, which obviously is a possibility here with the, with the cracks. It's not good news. And it's up to me to tell Carol. I've got some news for you. We've done some digging around. This extension was built on top of the drain run, okay. and the weight of it has moved down onto the drains mm -hmm. and cracked the drains. So it's soaking into the soil, and that is making the situation worse. You don't want to soak soil underneath the building. If you reroute mm. the drain mm. run and take it around this building, mm. you're likely to be looking at £2,000. Mm. There's a rather more significant problem, oh. which I wanted to talk to you about around the front of okay. the building. So, so that was the good news? I'm afraid that kind of was the good news. Okay. I thought I'd start on and up. OK. Anyway, come with me. So far, our investigations have revealed that Carol's house is built on a variety of subsoils, including some very unstable peat. There may be a solution, but it involves digging even deeper to find solid ground and discover just what damage has been done to that concrete foundation. For this, we need to dig a great big hole right in the middle of Carol's beloved house. The only problem is, is there's one further place we need to investigate, which is the area of the house that's showing the most significant distress. Okay. And under there, we need to know what is happening to All the right. subsoil. The only difficulty is that place is slap bang in the middle of your hallway. The only option is that we dig up your hall. I suppose it's one of those things you need to know. You know, you want a health check, you want to know what's what, don't you? But it is going to mean taking up the, the carpet the that floor. you love and the yeah. floor yeah. and digging a great big hole. I think I'm in shock, really. I think, if, if I'm honest, I'm kind of just a bit numb to it all at the moment because it's become a process. But really, this is my home and it's got a lot of, you know, attachment, a lot of sentiment. So in one part of me is going, right, just do it and let's find out. And the other part of me is going, no. It's a really tough call, but vital if we're to discover why Carol's bungalow is sinking. With the subsoil as it is, mm. the building is just about staying together in one piece. What you certainly cannot afford to do is add any extra weight to this okay. building or do anything structural to it without being absolutely sure mm. what is underneath it. Mm. Not only being sure what's underneath it, but then there may be things that you have to do to firm it up. So there's a big question mark over whether the loft conversion can even go ahead. Coming up, more bad news for the bungalow. This is really quite disastrous news. And to make a correct diagnosis, we have to dig very deep. I look at it now and you just think, well, it's just the building site. You might as well just pull it down and start again. Lytham St Anne's near Blackpool is home to single mum Carol. Her beloved bungalow is in crisis, riddled with cracks, with floors that appear to be moving. We've pinned the problem down to irregular areas of boggy peat, causing the foundations to sink unevenly, which means Carol's plans to add extra weight with a loft conversion are currently out of the question. This bungalow won't beat us, though, and we're pressing on with our investigation. We need to pinpoint just how deep that peak goes down underneath the property and also see whether the concrete raft the home is sitting on has cracked. All this means we're digging a great big hole right in the middle of the hallway of Carol's precious home. As someone who wanted the building to remain as untouched as possible, Carol's having to adopt a more pragmatic approach. I think uh, there's no option. You've got to do the test because it's you'd never know. You'd always be wondering, you'd always be thinking, what if, what if? So to me, at the moment, it's not an option. 
good decision, Carol, even though it looks scary. Carol is living through the consequences of many homeowners' worst nightmare, subsidence. Put simply, this is when a building starts to sink into the ground. Thirsty tree roots are responsible for 70% of subsidence. Another cause is hot weather, when water evaporates from the soil. Tarmac or paving means that rainwater is unevenly distributed into the subsoil. And when a pipe or drain leaks, the wastewater makes the soil around it soggy and soft. To help reduce the chances of subsidence, try not to plant trees too close to your home. Regularly check your drains for cracks or blockages and leave areas of garden unpaved to allow soil to naturally hydrate. Carol's subsidence is due to her concrete raft foundation sinking into patches of soggy peat. We're going to have to prop it up. Today, we've brought in a mechanical digger to probe deep into the ground beneath the building to find out where the mushy peat ends and the all-important solid ground begins. If we find solid ground within a 10-metre depth, we'll be able to shore up this home and Carol's dreams of a loft conversion are back on. If it's any deeper, the chances of the piling working effectively are reduced significantly and the cost of the work shoots up. We're also not sure how the concrete raft that Carol's home sits on has been bearing up. If it's cracked, it will need to be repaired, which could be very expensive indeed. Concrete specialist Professor Mike Grantham is assessing the damage. His first examination hull reveals concrete that appears OK. A perfectly decent piece of concrete. But poking around the rest of the bungalow reveals a different story, with a discovery right beneath the worst crack in the dining room. Now, look, there's a big, big crack. It's moved, look, it's moved massively. There's no doubt that this wall has just dropped. It's cracked the slab a there's along here. There's a parallel crack right across there. Do you think... Come, come and see this. Do you think that... Um, all this for small space. Do you think that that is because it hasn't been reinforced? Do you see it down there? It's cracking right the way. It would be surprising if it cracked like that with reinforcement. Well, this is more evidence, isn't there, that we need to dig that hole in the hallway to see what's happening <coughs> under the core of the house there. So I think let's go. Let's go digging. <laughs> The cracking shows the raft foundation is failing to bear up against the mushy, peaty subsoil. It's now even more important to prop this home with piles. To find out why the raft is cracking, we break a hole through one section. It's just seven and a half centimetres thick, with no sign of reinforcement. And that is not good enough. It needs to be at least 20 centimetres to support the building and the extra load of a loft conversion. And underneath it, we discover even more evidence of the appalling ground conditions we're up against. Oh, my God! Oh, my goodness! <laughs> He's gone! It's a bit soft, though. Sure, yeah. <laughs> it's such soft ground that you could go through it with your finger. Oh, my God. But I that's think... super soft. Yeah, that's... just went flying mm. down, didn't it? seems unlikely that we're actually going to be able to go far enough to find really solid ground. I don't think we're going to find a bottom here. This is really quite disastrous news. Yes. We've got loads coming down and nothing really competent to support those loads. So four metres down, it's sludge down there. That's oh, not good, is it? With these results, it's even more important that the mechanical diggers find solid ground. Two hours later, and what have they unearthed? It's the very best news. We've found solid ground between 8 and 8.6 metres at all four corners of the bungalow, and this depth means piling will be possible. 
Oh, wow, so really. If Carol did go ahead with her loft conversion, then piling would be absolutely essential. But given the soil conditions we've discovered, personally, I think it's strongly advisable to pile the bungalow anyway. That would require endless stilts down to solid ground. This will be expensive and so not great news for Carol or her budget. How do you feel now about the whole project, having seen what your building's sitting on? I really just feel a bit flabbergasted, if you want the truth of it, kind of, what next? Well, you know, where do we go from here? There is one option, and that is that you could pile the house. Now, by piling it, effectively, you put it on stilts, which takes the weight of the house down so that it's actually sitting on solid ground. The only thing is, that's likely to cost you around £20,000. £20,000. If you want to do any kind of structural changes at all to the building, you need to spend £20,000 piling it so it can take extra weight. OK, well, we're just going to have to have a... You've got to have a think about have to it. talk about it, yeah. It's clear that a £20,000 bill for the piling is a big shock. But Carol really wants to make the structural changes to make the room for her mother to move in. I want to make sure that she and Alex are armed with all the facts about piling, so I've set up a tailor-made demonstration at the Building Research Establishment in Watford, a cutting-edge test centre for the UK construction industry. We've made a model to represent Carol's bungalow and have positioned it on three different types of soil. Soft, firm and very soft, just like the ground in Lytham. These markers will indicate any movement in the structure and show Carol just what would happen to her home if she went ahead with the extra weight of the loft conversion without piling. Even as it is now, there's a danger that it will split and it, its back will break. If you did a loft conversion, there'd be more weight that would be carried by the house. So we're going to put more weight onto the house and see what happens. The weight represents the extra eight tonnes that the loft conversion, comprising of a bedroom and ensuite, would add to the bungalow. Even though the weight is spread evenly across the house, the markers show that the part on relatively stable ground remains level, whilst the part on the softer soil starts to sink. Putting the extra weight that you would end up having if you did a loft conversion means that it's splitting apart here mm. and here. This is effectively like a seesaw and eventually yeah, it'll in bend middle. in the middle mm. and that's effectively what would happen to your house and it's called yeah. breaking its back. Not good, is it? No. The disastrous consequences if you converted without piling have sunk in. Time to show Carol what could be achieved if she does decide to pilot. So now the piles have been fitted in all three sections of the house. And if we take this piece away here, you'll see what the piles are doing. Great. The three parts of the house that were sitting on different sorts of subsoil mm. now all have these stilts going down to solid ground. Right. So it'll all work together. Excellent. So now the weights are going back on, as you can see. Because the piles holding each section up, these lines are still meeting up and the house hasn't moved. So this should give you the confidence to know that you can go ahead with the loft conversion and it will be safe and secure. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. I suppose if that crack hadn't arrived last year, just never probably wouldn't, wouldn't have thought about it and would have just gone ahead. So, in a way, it was good that it did happen and we've done all the tests and know exactly what's what because you'd have spent all that time and money and, and it just watched the house crumble. Before any work can start on the bungalow, Carol receives some tragic news that halts all of her current plans for renovation. Her beloved mother has passed away.
Six weeks later, Carol bravely decides she will get the house piled and press on with her project. Despite this meaning, the house has to be ripped into pieces. There are 12 piles going in through Carol's house, while 15 will be positioned from the outside. Probably take us about the week to get them in and get all the groundworks done and the underpinning works. With the house in bits, Carol has a major rethink of how to put it back together. I want to find out more and check she's OK. 19 months to the day Dad died, my mum died suddenly and unexpectedly. Do you feel differently about the house now because she was going to yeah. come and stay there? Yes. Clearly, the way I was designing it was, you know, for two women to share and we were going to have two kitchens and the whole design had to change just like that. So how does it feel now? It's been good in a way to have the project and have the people around me because they're great team. That, uh, uh, the guys are absolutely wonderful and it's keeping me occupied and it's almost not allowing me to think about really what's happened. So it's kind of a bit bittersweet in a way. Well, I think you're being very brave about it I and mean, it must be all the kind of the way that you imagined using the house. Mm. When it, do you find, do you struggle with the fact that you think, well, this is where we were going to do this and this yeah, is Yeah, very much so. I really don't, you know, I don't know how I'm going to feel when it's all complete, frankly, because it isn't going to be what it was going to be. Carol's plan to use the project as a focus to get her through her grief is a brave one. The loft conversion is still going ahead and her builders have started to get the transformation underway. This is going to be the hallway coming along here to um, a bathroom and there's a beautiful oak staircase that's going to turn and go up into the loft. It's going to be lovely. With her side extension being replaced too, costs are tight and son Alex is keen to learn some new skills and lend a hand to help his mum. Get a bit on the end of the trowel and if you flick it like that, when you turn it upside down, it stays on the end of the trowel. Then you get the end of the concrete block and you make sure it's all lined up in all directions. The edge of the block should line up exactly on this string line here. So do you want to have a go? Yeah. Great, excellent. That's it. And appropriately, it's left to Carol to apply the finishing touches. So, I laid that brick. Well, I think that is going to be what keeps the house standing. Well done. Oh, it did. Personally, you built this house with your own fair hands. Mm -hmm. Makes all the difference. Coming up, will Carol be able to turn this building site into a new home? Feels very positive, very destructive at the moment. The whole house has been gutted, piled, and is now undergoing a much bigger transformation than ever imagined. The guys are really cracking ahead with it, and, um, yeah, lots happening, so it um, feels very positive, very destructive at the moment. And it's all hands on deck. Hi, Carol. Uh, yes, full thrust, yeah. I've been really impressed with all the hard work that the guys are putting into it. You know, you see them so hard at it and what they do and how dedicated they are, I'm really impressed. The loft conversion's going in with windows and a staircase. And the gardens are being landscaped. Plus, a conservatory is being put on the back. It's been an emotional journey for Carol and she's experienced an enormous upheaval. But now that the house sits on firm ground, is the reality of her dreams all that she'd hoped for? What was once a tired building splitting with cracks is now a property to be proud of. Six months on from our first meeting, I'm bowled over by how Carol's transformed the exterior inside is just as impressive. What a fantastic room. Before, this space used to be two rooms, the study and Carol's bedroom. 
Now it's almost unrecognisable in its new form as an open plan kitchen and family room. And this was the study and your bedroom. That's right. Mm -hmm. I wanted lots of light. I love light and space and um, I just love this kitchen. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Mm. So is there an element of the fact that what started with a little crack thinking maybe I should mm. fix that crack? Mm. You kind of got a bit carried away a lot of Just a bit, but you know when you start thinking, well, if I do that, I better do that. And well, actually, if you do that, that's not going to be right unless you do this. And it just was like a domino effect. It went from, well, fix the crack and just to do a bit to, but that's not a little right if you don't do that with it. And then you just want to do the whole thing properly because you just know you're never going to want to do it all again. So you just no. go for it. No. And what a wonderful, wonderful picture. Yeah, that's Alex painted that if that's that's mum and dad really great fantastic yeah, yeah. very right there yeah let's see the rest mm -hmm. the dining room was the scene of the bungalow's biggest cause for worry an enormous crack ran across two walls and there was serious movement in the floor now thanks to piling it couldn't be more secure the walls have been rebuilt and the floor relaid, and the dining room is back to its former glory, complete with some extra special finishes. Isn't that great? <laughs> is this partly to celebrate the crack-free wall? <laughs> <laughs> but it's to let light through, really. A bit mesmerising. Certainly a talking point. It certainly is, yes. <laughs> You don't normally see a staircase in a bungalow, so you did the love conversion. Yes. It's lovely. Upstairs is the love conversion that very nearly never happened. But now Carol's got a further two bedrooms and a shower. Yet again, it beautifully expands the space she calls home. So all this has been made possible because of the piling. Exactly. Couldn't have done any of this without. I think what's so important is if you think, if we hadn't done this up here, then we'd have no room down there to have, you know, done what we have with the kitchen mm. and all those rooms. They just mm. wouldn't be possible, so... Mm. Would you have been disappointed if you hadn't been able to fulfil the potential of this house that meant so much to you? Yeah, I mean, as you know, I'm very emotionally attached to, 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 this, to this home and, and I wanted to... to give it the TLC it needed and to really maximise on its potential. I'm so glad you were able to do this after all because it, it is fantastic up here. It is lovely. It's amazing. Yeah. Love it. But believe it or not, Carol's been saving the best till last. There's a bright and airy new conservatory which enables the house to flow beautifully into the carefully crafted landscaped garden. Is this all that you'd hoped for? It certainly um, is, and yeah, awesome. More. Yes. Much is more. it? So what were you expecting? No, I sort of just expected a slightly less crack-ridden version of what we had to begin with, and it's just totally different home, you know. It's been a bit of a roller coaster ride, hasn't it? I think it's one of those things where now you understand it, you think, well, yeah, why would you not pile it? Let's just get on with it, get the professionals in, you know, and get it done properly. It feels great and you haven't even had a chance to even start living in it mm. or enjoying it yet and it already feels great just knowing that all that's been done, mm. you know? But I know Mum and Dad would be thrilled to bits. And Dad would have been sat here waiting for his cup of tea, wouldn't yeah, he? Yeah, as long as he's sat, he'd love it. <laughs> yeah. Outside, the previously uninspiring garden has been turned into a horticultural masterpiece. It's completely transformed. It's wonderful. In fact, the house flows into the garden rather than feeling like house garden. I think they've made it really lovely, yes. You did have dreams of living a bit of a good life here, didn't yes. you? Yes, yeah. the chickens. This is exactly like I'd imagined it. Yeah. This is the, probably the one bit which has turned out sort of almost exactly as I thought it would. Yeah. I think you've kind of made the most of it, mm. the house and the garden. Yeah. thrilled. I am really delighted. I just know Mum and Dad would have, well, they will be very happy. I kind of think they know what's going on already. So 
think they've been a big part of it all along, so you still feel like they're around, so... fortunate to have such an incredible team around her to pull off this spectacular transformation but she's also learned a really valuable lesson and that is that you can change the way a house looks and it can still keep its memories.